Welcome back to the build guys. We're getting a little bit further now, getting into the electrical side of things. So this week we're gonna wire in our boost gauge and our air fuel ratio gauge. So first up, what do these things do? Our boost gauge is easy. It's gonna be taking intake pressure from our turbo here and telling me straight up what it actually is. I'm aiming for five PSI to start with, so I don't lift the head, but we can play with that later on, eventually aiming for that 14. So the big one here is really just making sure we don't over boost it via any sort of bad electricalness I've done. So that's why that one's going in. The other one is gonna be our air fuel ratio gauge. This is gonna be taken from the exhaust side of the housing here, uh, further down the downpipe. This is gonna be giving me a readout of my air to fuel ratio in the exhaust so I can tell whether I'm leaning out or running rich and we can balance that. That is the really important one we need to be able to tune this thing to run perfectly. So that one is really, really a must. The boost one, not so much. For diesels though, I believe it's a bit more of uh, EGTs, exhaust gas temperatures, because you know, in case you set your car on fire. Where I'm gonna have them located is gonna be along my A pillar here. The Surf doesn't come with a stock standard boost any, or gauges anywhere. Uh, aftermarket accessories don't allow for an A pillar gauge or really gauges anywhere. And I don't wanna make it look just terrible. So a custom built A pillar gauge holder is going in there so I can display both my boost and my AFR. All the wires are already run up and behind my dash here coming up to the A pillar and they're tucking out the bottom here for things like, well, wiring to the power and ECU, and the plug that's gonna pop out the bottom to our O2 sensor in our exhaust. Back to the engine bay now, we'll start with our boost gauge. I've already run the lines through one of the grommets at the front there. These two lines are all we need in the engine bay. Red and black is gonna be our solenoid for our boost controller, and the black is actually a vacuum line. That's just gonna straight up be our boost pressure to read to me. So the gauges I have gone with are AEM. Come with a full manual printout. Gives me the rundown of the installation diagram. It gives me the rundown of uh, whether I'm gonna be using an internal or an external wastegate, where to grab the boost pressure from, what all the wires do. Uh, really, it's just making it super simple for me to do this homemade wire job. So first of all, we gotta mount our little buddy here, our little solenoid in our engine bay, find a nice spot for him, somewhere easily accessible, and then run a few lines. As you can probably tell, I don't work from a workshop. I'm working in my backyard in the middle of nowhere, out in the cold. And so I just make this up out of nothing, this little backyard mount here. Well, that's gonna be enough to be able to mount my solenoid there. And now all you need to do is attach these two brown ones with the singular black and singular red one from the back end of the gauge. Now these don't actually matter which way they go, that way or that way, doesn't matter. So we'll snip them, crimp them and pull through. That's that connected up. Next our little T-bits here and our breather. This is just gonna be our boost pressure in, out and breather line. So the next part of our installation is we've run the vacuum line, we've run the power to the solenoid, which is this one. We now need to run this half, which is all our sort of technical stuff, which in reality, I've tucked it all through the back here. We don't actually need any of this. This is all stuff for like A net, uh, which is the a AEM net. All we need to worry about is power for the gauge, negative for the gauge, and power for our solenoid. So those three is all we need to worry about. Tucked up in here is a little fuse panel that I've been able to run a positive through from our accessories. So accessories positive coming through, and then it's got four little banks here that I can utilize. So this is gonna be for my boost gauge power, my solenoid power, and my AFR power uh, on there. Plus the fourth one is gonna be power to my lighting rig, but we'll get into that in another video. Four in there, I need another fuse, but otherwise all you need to do now is I've cut a little hole in here, which basically I can now just pull that positive line through, not the orange one, I want the red one. So we'll pull the two red ones through, cut them off and step them straight into there. So the positives wired in now, I've just attached the negatives 
down in my bank down here just to see if everything's going. Basically, this just means we can now check to make sure our sensors are actually going to turn on. And we can, they are going to, nice. So it's currently negative 1.8 PSI outside. I'm guessing that's outside. And it's telling me sensor because my sensor is not plugged in because that's of course the wideband sensor. But my gauges turn on fine and dandy. That's what we want to see. Boost is pretty much done. Boost control is in, uh, solenoids in, true boost units in, it's all done and dusted. All we need to do is just wire up that negative. The next one is for our wideband. We need to wire in our negative. These are all the things we don't need. Again, that's AEM net and uh, optional extras. We don't need any of those. What we do need is our negative. So we can wire that in. And this is our output to our ECU. So this is our zero to five volt analog system that's gonna be able to tell the ECU what this is reading. By this, I mean the wideband unit. So then we can actually, the ECU understands the AFRs we need and we can tune it properly from there. Now finally, run through the firewall and tucked in down here is our connector for our wideband sensor. I've just used the firewall bung that the rear wiper water was run through. Pulled that apart because I don't need that anymore because I don't see out my rear window. And instead utilized that bung to run this plug down to the exhaust system. Pretty crazy stuff. Over the other side, we can see here we've run that analog cable through, here's the whole thing, runs all the way from the other side, and this is going to stay there until we go through and install our ECU. So that's pretty much the gist of it for now. The truck's still a mad mess, but we are slowly getting there. A few more things have arrived for me to tidy up the rest of this. I've got new dash lights, new interior lights to go in. Um, so we're getting to the final stages here, hopefully a few more weeks, if not months, uh, to get it finally drivable again. But otherwise, guys, Hang around, click that subscribe button for the next episode. Cheers, team.